exposing the truth of Chinese farmers' poverty. Influential social media account deleted in seconds, faces threats of wiping out your whole family. The Chinese embassy in New York provides funds to welcome Xi Jinping. Chinese security personnel intervene, injuring several protesters. Xin Shui, senior CCP officials are more aware than ordinary people that the party's demise could happen at any time. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Exposing the truth of Chinese farmers' poverty, influential social media account deleted in seconds, faces threats of wiping out your whole family. On November 13, a Chinese internet personality, Hu Chin Feng, posted a video on Billy Billy, a Chinese video sharing website, claiming to have received death threats, including the ominous message of wiping out your entire family. He has already reported these threats to the police. Hu Chin Feng stated that unidentified individuals openly offered 5,000 Chinese yuan to purchase information about his home address. The threats included messages such as, I will go to Jilin to harm you with a knife. Are you afraid? I am also keeping an eye on your family's address. Are you afraid? Do you believe I will wipe out your entire family during the spring festival? I just want to know if you're afraid. Hu Chin Feng admitted to being quite frightened. After discovering that the threatening individual's internet IP address was located in Guangxi, he immediately called the local police to report the incident. Many netizens, upon learning of this, expressed deep concern for Hu Chinfeng's safety, hoping that the authorities would promptly address the situation and ensure his safety. According to mainland sources, Hu Chinfeng began shooting videos about the difficult lives of impoverished elderly people in rural areas in March of this year. Due to the exposure of the harsh lives of China's lower-class citizens in these videos, he faced a nationwide ban, and his audiovisual platform accounts were also cancelled. In one of Hu Chinfeng's videos shot in March, titled Randomly Finding an Elderly Person Shopping, I'll Pay, he encountered a 78-year-old woman in Chengdu. After her husband's death in 2005, she moved to Chengdu with her son from Nanchung, Sichuan, to work. She had worked as a nanny and a furniture worker, facing numerous hardships along the way. She currently has no pension and relies on a monthly 107 Chinese yuan rural insurance from her hometown. The video portrayed her difficult life, shedding light on the challenges faced by her and her son. It's worth noting that some online users doubted the authenticity of the elderly woman's situation in the video, suspecting it might be a scam. Hu Chin Feng explained that those unfamiliar with the living conditions of rural elderly people might think it's staged, emphasizing that such low incomes are indeed a reality for many in these areas. After the release of this video, many Chinese netizens resonated with the content, reflecting on their own grandparents' lives and expressing sorrow for the impoverished people living at the bottom of society. However, the video was swiftly banned on major Chinese media platforms by the Communist Party. Netizens discussed the sensitive nature of the video, speculating that the fundamental reason for its ban is the touching portrayal of pension issues, which is considered a high-voltage topic in China. Despite the resistance, Chen Feng did not give up and continued to adhere to his original intention of giving voice to the plight of the impoverished, capturing the real-life struggles of ordinary people. Unexpectedly, he is now facing threats and intimidation from unidentified individuals. The Chinese Embassy in New York provides funds to welcome Xi Jinping. Chinese security personnel intervene, injuring several protesters. At around 10 a.m. on November 14, as Xi Jinping's motorcade entered crucial areas of San Francisco to attend the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation APEC, the conflict between protesters and pro-communist individuals unfolded. Various Chinese pro-democracy and human rights groups from across the United States, including the China Democracy Party, Hong Kong Association, China Democracy Education Foundation, Humanitarian China, China Rights, California Freedom Sculpture Park, Hong Kong Association, Asian Women Refugee Art Group, China Democracy and Human Rights Alliance, and Democratic Front, as well as protesters from independent movements in Tibet, Xinjiang, and other regions, gathered at the outskirts of San Francisco Airport. They carried banners, chanted slogans, and engaged in protest activities. 
Meanwhile, around 11 a.m., students studying abroad, overseas Chinese community groups, and pro-communist organizations arrived one after another to welcome Xi Jinping. Hundreds of pro-communist individuals displayed the five-star red flag of the CCP and banners with slogans like warmly welcome President Xi Jinping's visit to the United States. Communist songs played at a high volume, while protesters countered with mournful music. However, in contrast to the protesters, when media reporters attempted to interview the welcoming crowd, they remained silent. In the afternoon, physical conflicts broke out between protesters and supporters. In the midst of the chaos, protesters seized a flagpole from the welcoming group, prompting the police on the scene to intervene quickly. Paid for welcoming Xi Jinping. Sound of Hope cited insider information that these individuals, wearing red hats and red vests and avoiding interviews with reporters, are from an organization in New York called the Global Anti-X Cult Alliance. This organization has long been serving the CCP overseas. On American soil, they have fervently praised and supported the CCP, assisting in monitoring Chinese people overseas. For the welcoming of Xi Jinping's visit to San Francisco, the CCP's embassy in New York provided this organization with complimentary services, including meals, accommodation, and airfare, not only free of charge but also giving each person $200 per day. Chinese security personnel injured several protesters. During Xi Jinping's recent stay at St. Regis in San Francisco, a disturbing incident unfolded on the afternoon of the 14th. At approximately 3 p.m., around 300 people, including Falun Gong practitioners, petitioners, democracy activists, and human rights groups, gathered at the intersection in front of St. Regis, brandishing signs in protest. According to reports, Chinese security personnel accompanying Xi Jinping resorted to violence against overseas petitioners on the street, resulting in injuries to several individuals. At approximately 2.30 p.m., Petitioner Li Huanjun from Beijing's Pomegranate Village was assaulted by the Chinese security team while outside St. Regis. Li Huanjun informed a Voice of America reporter, they hit my head with a flagpole. The security personnel from the Chinese embassy in Washington, D.C., pinched my waist, arms, and legs. My head still hurts now. They went too far, and I reported it to the police. In the afternoon, around 3 p.m., Petitioner Jia Junwei from Harbin was attacked by Chinese security personnel while holding a sign and voicing her grievances at the entrance of St. Regis, resulting in injuries. During an interview with Voice of America, Jia Junwei still had bandages on her head. She said, Today, behind the hotel where Xi Jinping stayed, I came to hand over a letter to Xi Jinping, accusing local government officials of corruption, using the public security system to suppress us and sending us to prison with various fabricated charges. The security personnel kept chasing me. After surrounding me with the five-star red flag, I was knocked down by a female security guard in her forties or fifties. Then they kicked my head and attacked me with the flagpole. Please tell me, we are not safe in the United States, and we are even less safe in China because we can be arrested at any time. Xing Shui, senior CCP officials are more aware than ordinary people that the party's demise could happen at any time. More and more high-ranking Chinese Communist Party CCP, officials are being reported for illegally bringing prohibited books into the country and reading them for an extended period, according to official announcements. On November 14, the CCP officially announced the arrest of Zhu Tsongjiao, vice chairman of the Zhujiang Provincial Political Consultative Conference, on charges of corruption. When Zhu Tsongjiao was expelled from the party and public office on November 7, the charges against him included making baseless criticisms of the central government and illegally bringing prohibited books into the country for prolonged reading. The term prohibited books in CCP official media reports refers to publications with seriously political problematic content. In recent years, an increasing number of fallen high-ranking CCP officials have faced similar charges. For example, on October 12, former director of the Economic Committee of the Liaoning Provincial Political Consultative Conference, Wang Ying, was reported for illegally bringing prohibited books into the country and privately storing classified information. On July 28, Jean Junwei, former party secretary and chairman of the Hunan Changsha Industrial Investment Group Company, Limited, 
was accused of illegally bringing books that slander and defame CCP leaders into the country. On June 25, Zhang Gillen, former director of the Beijing State-Owned Assets Supervision and Administration Commission, was accused of reading publications with serious political issues. On June 13, Su Shiping, former president and editor-in-chief of Shanghai Oriental Net, was accused of privately possessing and reading prohibited books. Chinese-American author Xing Shui told the Epoch Times on November 14 that those who have recognized the imminent collapse of the CCP include a significant proportion of high-level officials within the CCP. Most of them have long since left the country and have had the opportunity to see the development of the entire world. Why did they transfer their homes and wealth to democratic countries? This is direct evidence. She stated that many high-ranking CCP officials know what they have done to the people, see the instability of the CCP, and also see the inevitable outcome of the CCP. They understand that the collapse of authoritarian rule is likely to happen suddenly. Why don't they leave their families in China? Especially when they call on the people to go to remote and impoverished areas for construction. Why don't they leave their children in China to go to school and contribute to this country? The vast majority of them have already gone far away and the vast majority of their wealth has been secretly moved out of China. We know that in Swiss banks, there is a huge amount of wealth hidden by high-ranking CCP officials. It is precisely the higher the rank of CCP officials, the more they know about the ultimate fate of the CCP, the collapse of authoritarian rule, and it is likely to be a sudden result. It is not a step-by-step -step process, it may be a disorderly, sudden situation. Additionally, opponents of the CCP can also see the imminent collapse of the CCP because they see through the inevitable outcome of the CCP's authoritarian rule. However, Xing Shui pointed out that under the control of the CCP, ordinary people, especially those in the lower and middle classes, may not see the truth. Because they are controlled by the CCP's long-term policy of fooling the people, brainwashing, and coercion, the CCP constantly gives them self-education through lessons. Over time, a self-protective mechanism is formed, and they do not see the truth, only focusing on what the CCP shows them, prosperous and peaceful things. These people may not realize that a change may come suddenly at any time. Xing Shui believes that more and more people will see through the CCP. In November of last year, a large number of young people took to the streets to protest, shouting slogans such as Communist Party. Step down. Xi Jinping. Step down. The movement known as the White Paper Movement, even gained international attention. It exerted enough pressure on the authorities to bring an end to inhumane lockdown and epidemic prevention policies. Yuan Hongbing, a scholar living in Australia, stated on October 7 that the nearly 20-year-long movement to withdraw from the Chinese Communist Party, refers to Three Withdrawals Movement, is a great enlightenment movement of thought and spirit. In this significant historical movement, conditions are created for the next nationwide resistance and people's uprising. The Three Withdrawals Movement was sparked by the editorial series Nine Commentaries on the Communist Party, initially published in the Chinese-language edition of the Epoch Times on November 19, 2004. This series extensively reveals the bloody history of the CCP and provides an in-depth analysis of the party's deceptive, violent, cult-like, and rogue nature across various historical, political, economic, cultural, and faith-related contexts. Since assuming power in 1949, the CCP has persecuted over half of China's population. In Part 7 of the editorial series, titled On the Chinese Communist Party's History of Killing, it states that under the rule of the CCP, 60 million to 80 million innocent Chinese people have been killed, leaving broken families behind. This number surpasses the total deaths in both world wars combined. On December 3, 2004, the Epoch Times issued a statement urging Chinese people to withdraw from the CCP and its affiliated organizations. Since then, volunteers of the movement have tirelessly spread the truth about the evil nature of the Chinese Communist Party globally. This effort is particularly focused on mainland Chinese citizens who, having once raised their hands and pledged allegiance to the organization until death, are now being helped to recognize the danger of the regime. As of the posting of this video, more than 422 million people have withdrawn from the Chinese Communist Party and its affiliated organizations. If you are Chinese, we sincerely hope that you choose to make the three withdrawals. You can log into the website global.tuadang.org choose quit the CCP box, 
where you have the option to choose a pseudonym for safety concerns or use your real name, both options are acceptable. Follow the provided instructions thereafter. This way, you can erase the toxic oath and choose a better future for yourself. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths. Thank you.